Hello everyone, welcome again. In this software testing tutorial, we are going to understand what is Software Development Lifecycle or SDLC. So Software Development Lifecycle is the set of process that you follow uh, if you're working in any software development team to basically start developing the software and deliver it until the software is deployed and maintained, right? So the whole process is known as software development lifecycle. Now that process, you need to understand step by step what all phases are there to develop any software or analyze the requirement and then develop the software and deliver it to the customer or deploy in the production, right? So we need to understand if we want to work in the software testing team, we need to also understand what software development lifecycle is and based on different you know approaches we'll understand how software development life cycle you know is in different software development approaches say for example waterfall development approach how sdlc is there and then if you are following v model how software development life cycle is in the v model or in the agile uh, approach for example scrum so uh, let's start with the software development life cycle um, so here i'll totally cover SDLC and in the next tutorial I'll cover software testing lifecycle which is sort of a subset of software development lifecycle. STLC fits within software development lifecycle. So the, uh, the first phase in software development lifecycle is uh, the requirement gathering. Okay, so requirement gathering and analysis. Okay. So what does the requirement gathering means, right? So we'll understand first requirement gathering and then analysis. So say for example, there is an organization uh, ABC and this is the organization which takes the software development project, okay? So you will be, you know, having certain teams there, development teams, so team one, two, three, and these teams basically work on different development projects. Now, any organization or any person who is the customer who wants to build something, say for example, I am a customer and I want to build an app. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll either, if I'm a big organization, I'll, uh, you know, have a tendering uh, and then I'll announce that I want to build something like this. There will be multiple organizations that will bid and then based on those bids, I'll choose the the organization or the team that I want to give the project, right? So uh, now if I want to build an app or a website uh, in the simplest form, okay? So I'll provide some requirements to the organization, right? So what requirement gathering is basically once this ABC organization gets the project and if I am the customer, then I will provide the requirements or, you know, there will be a team of people basically in the customer, you know, team. So who will provide the requirement to the organization who wants to build the software, right? Or who, who will be building the software for us. So those requirement when gathered by this particular organization is known as requirement gathering. Okay. So all the uh, features that I want to be in my app or in my website, I will provide those details and then all the details will be documented. Okay, so all the details will be documented and this is what the requirements document is. Now in the waterfall approach, this was a lengthy, you know, requirements document, but in agile, it's in the form of user stories or epics basically. So epic will be the high level user story. That is what captures the high level requirement of the customer. Okay, so this is what a requirement gathering phase is when you gather the requirement about the software, what customer is actually looking for in, or in terms of feature, what the customer is looking for into the software or the app that you're trying to build. Then the analysis phase is basically once you gather the requirement, you also analyze the requirement, whether those requirements are feasible or not, right? So. Feasibility analysis is very important. So once the customer provides a certain requirement, there might be some limitations in terms of technology support or any other, you know, uh, issues. Because of that, you might not be able to fulfill those requirements or not be able to implement those requirements. So in that particular case, what you need to do is 
you need to basically analyze and understand that whether those requirement implementation is possible or not if not you need to communicate that to the customer about the analysis and then there will be discussion and updates accordingly to the requirement okay so this is about the requirement gathering and analysis phase this is the first phase of software development life cycle the next phase is the design phase all right what this design phase is all about so once the requirement are available in the design phase what the technical architects do is in the team you have the requirement and based on those requirement you want to basically lay the foundation of how the software will be built right so say for example you want to build a house okay so the first thing you do is you design how you want to build right you don't directly start building the house without having a design and understanding how the house will look like so if a customer said that i want you know three rooms in my house two bathrooms um you know two kitchen uh, living room so all those things need to be designed properly first and shown to the customer and uh, clarified from the customer is this how you want to you know um, is this where you want your room to be is this where you want your kitchen to be right so same is true with the software you need to basically first design based on what you have got, gathered as the requirement and then analyze with the customer the design that that's what exactly he's want he wants or she wants so similar is the case like the car case so i have the car a customer asked to you know build a car with four wheels and i have put four wheels here right so this is not fit for you so i need to basically have the design and show it to customer whether you want wheels here or whether you want wheels here right so customer will say no 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 this is not i want this car is not going to move right so i want a car that moves so this is how you clarify the requirement with the customer okay so in the design you design how the overall software is going to you know what the design will look like so technical architects do it and then this is what the design phase is and in design there are different phases as well so high level design low level design um that is within the design phase so that's the second phase third phase is develop now what happens in develop is so development so development phase is actually the coding phase right so once you have the design ready uh, and you know what you are going to build then you start the development work or you start building the house right so you have the design you have the foundation laid and then you know you start putting the bricks and same is the case with the software so once the design is ready the next phase is the development or coding phase wherein the development team will start writing the code to implement those requirements okay the fourth phase is the test okay so once the development is done and a development team has you know created certain features or developed certain features they will provide those features or they'll deploy those features into the test environment for the testers to test okay now if you're you, you will be working as a test uh, tester within a team you will go to that particular you know test environment and launch the application or the app and verify that whatever features or whatever requirements are being built in this particular release they are working as expected right so this is the testing phase so in testing phase you do the testing work for the application or the app okay uh then after the testing is successful everything is fine and stakeholders have agreed to release the software the next phase is to basically deploy right what does deploy mean so deploy means deploying to production so you want be having all the code into the testing right so you have to basically move it to production where the customer can access or if it is for the public use for example gmail is the application which is used by everyone right or all the public whoever has the gmail account or wants to create a gmail account now if gmail google would have developed and uh, just kept it there in their testing environment and not available over the internet then that's just within their organization it's not available to the public now if it wants to, uh, the the 
customer for Gmail are the people like you and me, right? So they have to move it to the production over the internet and this is what deployment is. So in the deployment, they move the code to the production and make it available to the uh, relevant customer for whom that software is being built. So in, in Gmail case, it is for us and that is why it is, you know, deployed in the data centers uh, or the whole code and it is available over the internet for us to access the Gmail emails, all right? So in the deployment phase, the actual code is being deployed for the customers who are going to use it. It might be a set of customers or it might be the wider public, all right? So it depends what the context is of that particular software. So after the deployment phase, the next phase is the maintenance. All right, so in maintenance phase, once the deployment happens, okay, in the production, the software needs to be maintained, right? So for example, you buy a car, you bring it, it's a new car. After every six months, you have to service it, right? So it is required because if you want to use the uh, car without any issues, you have to basically take care of it. You have to maintain and you have to see that there are no issues or there are, there are every, every functionality or machinery is working as expected. Similarly, in software, you have to basically ensure that you do that maintenance or regular maintenance um, uh, for the software so that it is not, it doesn't crash. So say, for example, the software uh, might crash due to, you know, hardware issues or uh, there might be, you know, issues within the software itself. So as we have already understood about the seven principles of software testing, so 100% testing is not possible and even though if you still can't find any more issues in your software, it doesn't mean that the software that deployed uh, that is deployed in the production is 100% defect free, right? So you can't say that. So in maintenance phase, what happens is you basically regularly maintain the software and you also fix any of the production issues that come through, right? So once the software is in the maintenance, you keep um, uh, a watch on what all issues are being reported by the customers and if there are critical issues or any issues that are being reported by the customers they are being fixed and redeployed in the production so this is what all happens into the maintenance phase right so these are the key six uh, so basically six phases of software development life cycle and you need to understand the software development life cycle before you understand software testing life cycle in the next tutorial that I'll cover, right? So requirement gathering and analysis, design, development, testing, deploy, and maintenance. Very simple. It's a phase or a life cycle that any development team will follow to develop any software or application, right? Now these phases, this is, uh, you know, will remain true for waterfall, for V model, for and even for agile, right? So in agile, uh, you know, you will have the requirement gathering. So this is this won't happen in each and every sprint, but it will happen in, you know, say for example, two to three months or in, in a one increment or program increment. So there will be requirement gathering phase and then design development testing. Testing will happen. Design development testing happens in very shorter iterations, two to four week cycle but phases are still same. So phases will still be there. The only difference which happens between these development approaches is the timeline that you follow. In waterfall approach, it will be longer timelines. In agile, it will be smaller timelines. In agile, maintenance, uh, you know, like deployment and maintenance or so deployment to production uh, can happen every month, okay? So it depends how the organization wants to deploy to the production, okay? But in waterfall, it was usually like six months to one year. So it depended uh, how the organization wants to deploy to production in waterfall approach, right? So this is the basic software development life cycle. Um, understand it very well. Uh, if there are any doubts, please comment in the comment section and I'll clarify all those doubts so that you are good enough to go ahead and explain it to any interviewer in the software testing interview. So that's all for this tutorial. Please do share and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.